Well, welcome everybody. We are living in a time of the golden awakening and the emergence of divergence like ourselves who want to give you the recipe against disruption to your spiritual harmony, emotional wellness and mental well-being, the everyday trial and tribulations. I'm Stamy always converging with you into the real reality where the invisible things make the physical things manifest. So in a hall, let's call it all about senses are our lenses on the healing well move to a high clip sponsored by play ups pop it cube and converging with me now in my is one of my good friends and accountability expert on me bonjour mademoiselle bonjour jenny bonjour tizi bonjour bonsoir <laughs> <Bonsoir. laughs> do you want to give um our beautiful audience um a quick synopsis of you and your background certainly can so um i remember also last time i was not complete so i will uh, make it a little bit longer this introduction so but still i will keep it short so i was born in belgium and uh, raised in belgium and then i when i was um, 20 i got into the aviation industry where i basically got posted to various different destinations so i'll just call out a few just to give you a broad overview that i've seen the world um so i lived in los angeles in harare in uh, zimbabwe all over europe in the major cities then i moved to japan and then to hong kong and then briefly to new zealand and then to australia where i have been living for uh, 12 years and uh, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because it gave me the opportunity with that um, with that career to experience different cultures and to get in touch with different philosophies and different ways of thinking. And it really has broadened my mind um, and it's added to obviously my education from Europe. So, and it's also made me super tolerant towards different views, different visions. I will never judge anyone. Um, so, and as an accountability expert, uh, which is my, my job today, I have my own company, it's called um, Accountability Expert, and I am an accountability and confidence coach, and I help people to um, broaden their awareness on uh, what is actually going on in their life that they can't see. Then we point that out, and we recognize that, and then we work on that, and turn their lens around so the lens through which they see their life can change completely and then consequently their life changes 180 degrees. Fantastic. So cool. I need to get in contact with you so you can be one of your patients. <laughs> <laughs> and turning this frequency, um, I have TZ Creative. Uh, buenas tardes. It's buenas noches. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to give our audience um, a quick synopsis of you and your background? Yeah, so my background, I would say, I don't know what anybody else would say, but I would say my background is very similar to Anmi's. So lived all over the world, um, New York, LA, Shanghai, Dubai. London, um, Turkey, Israel, so all over. Um, and then obviously stayed for prolonged periods of time in other areas. So I, I don't know how you class like living somewhere, but for me, it's anything over three months because I remember doing three, four month contracts um, as a singer in a band. So anything over that, I class as living somewhere. My background would be information, um, how I see information. So I have a photographic memory, which is aesthetic. So I remember pictures, colors, uh, formations, all that sort of thing. And then my game is psychology. So figuring out how people think and then utilizing it to their strengths or unlocking people's minds from their pre-indoctrination. Um, which is probably something that I'll touch on throughout these shows. Yeah, but yeah, so cool to be here. Um, cool to be doing this with you too. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I must admit, I don't have the same background 
as Aunt May and TZ. Um, I am a Kiwi, born and bred in New Zealand. I have had a short stint overseas in Australia. Obviously, my background and what I'm currently doing at the moment is slightly different. I work for a New Zealand-owned um, successful company, retail company here in New Zealand. And um, a part of my role, as much it's quite vast and different to uh, my lovely um, divergence here on the panel, um, obviously my background is in um, retail, also HR. Um, I oversee approximately 150 staff. So my role on an everyday basis is dealing with people and ensuring that their, their well-being um, and their emotional wellness is taken care of to ensure that we actually execute the business um, KPIs at the end of the day. So when you think about, and I've had a lot of questions of people asking, uh, what is this about and why are we here? Well, the main reason is it's all stemmed from COVID post, uh, pre and post. What I have found obviously in my business and my um, current role and as well as on me, and I suppose TZ from your travels, um, there's a lot of people out there at the moment struggling. Um, they're looking for a safe platform, somewhere to go with people that they can absolutely relate to. Obviously being myself, I'm a mum of two little girls that I absolutely adore. And I deal with a lot of women um, every single day. We face many, um, you know, day-to-day -day trials and tribulations when it comes to obviously mental health, um, suicide, just being a woman in general and obviously being a mum as well. And they're asking, they need people to go to, to be able to listen, share, and obviously take something away so that they can actually put um, those practices into day-to-day -day life. And I'm sure on me as well with yourself, um, with specific clients that you've had, um, they're potentially looking for somewhere to go as well. Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, I think there is a lot of uh, loneliness in, in the, currently and, and people feel like they don't belong. Um, and, and, and also like with, with all the news that is around us and, you know, like we, the media plays a big role currently in people's lives. So uh, people kind of lose touch with, with, uh, with the reality and, 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 and what is true. And I think people are very confused. Uh, and so, therefore, they are, um, there is a lot of loneliness, that's right. Yep, yep. Obviously, with TT yourself, with your travels um, overseas, you would have seen many different cultures and experienced many diversities, um, demographics that are facing the same, you know, situation that we are here in New Zealand as well as we are me as over in Australia. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's ubiquitous across the globe. Uh, I think, especially with Botox and and its emergence and and how it's all played out, I think because especially people in cities, they live in apartments and so they, they just do their they do their day to day life and because there's a lot of massive cities all around the world and they get isolated and I don't like to me I don't know whether it's deliberate, um, it possibly could be. Because it's it's the herd mentality, um, and I'm pretty sure Anmi knows exactly what I'm referring to. I I see I see a, an elite group of people herding people, and then using fear, um, like Botox, as a way to uh, control the masses. So that's what I see on that side. But we what we're here to do is to give people tangible pragmatic ways to get through their their emotional stress and and their their mental what would be the word their mental frailties um yeah and, and just help them with with tangible everyday uh practical things that they can do to keep themselves happy to keep them their minds uh occupied on on the future and their future and and show them that it is realistic to have a brighter outlook. Um, if you take thing, take information and utilize it the right way. 
Yeah, definitely, and I totally agree with with what you're saying. Um, and look, I suppose to again, um, at the end of the day, you you take away you know what you want from this. Um, and as usual, I have a, a set of questions that we were going to cover, but I'm going to change it up a little bit and actually um, uh, make some alterations. So ultimately what we wanted to talk about today was sensors um, and how we can utilize our sensors best to our advantage. So first and foremost, you know, what are our sensors and why are they so important in our everyday life? So Anmi, do you want to give us a bit of a, um, a breakdown in terms of what that means for you? Um, Yes, obviously, sensors are very, very important. And I think I told you guys this story before, but obviously our the people that are um, watching or listening don't know this about me. When I was 15, I was run over and I spent a lengthy time in hospital. So that's where I kind of like really discovered my senses, like rediscovered my senses. Obviously, every baby is born with senses. You, they can see, they can hear, they can smell, they can feel. Uh, but you don't really realize it unless you, I'm not going to say you need to lose it to kind of start using it. But in a way, that is the case. So sometimes when something is wrong, uh, people say, oh my God, I didn't really know how valuable it was to me. And uh, so when I walked out of that hospital, I could see more color. I could hear different things. And that's, again, the difference between listening and hearing, right? So if you are hearing, you're hearing basically everything that's going on. Uh, and that is on a subconscious level. Um, but when you are truly listening, there is many, many different ways that we can truly listen for what people are saying to us and this is going back to the previous question as in people feel lonely people feel misunderstood people feel that they don't belong but if you are truly empathetic and you have high emotional intelligence which anyone on the planet can train themselves for if you're not born with this the good news is you can learn how to develop this skill. And I do that with many of my clients. I really create an awareness of how they can listen to the things that people are not saying. So reading into what people are saying to you. And sometimes they're telling you something, but there's something completely different hidden behind the story, the verbal story that they are telling you. So. Uh, for me, my senses are there, yes, but there is so many different ways to use them. And same with, with, with uh, you know, seeing. You can see one thing, but what do you really see? In the end, it, it comes down to awareness and picking up on little hints and body language. And, and, and sometimes nothing is said, but you just need to go to your sixth sense, which is then your, your intuition. And... Um, I believe that from experience, women have uh, can more easily tune into their intuition, while you know some men uh, are are extremely good at that as well. And and even in business or or with any kind of meetings, you can feel if you really trust your your intuition, your heart, it will tell you if that is the right thing to do or not. So that is kind of my synopsis about senses. Yeah, and I, and I totally agree with absolutely everything that you're saying. And I suppose to looking in my everyday life and dealing with the amount of people, um, the different demographics, you know, their current situations, I've really got to understand from their perspective in terms of how they're verbalising and, and what they're telling me, um, you know, and me actually understanding, are you actually telling me what I want to hear or are you actually holding back and um, because you don't want me to actually find out the real information, therefore I can't actually help you. Um, and I suppose for yourself, um, TZ, you know, tell us um, about your senses because I know that you've got some amazing gifts, obviously. Um, I think for me, everything stems from understanding the spiritual world. Um, and Anmi will be able to relate to this and, and even yourself. Um, and so, like, obviously we have our practicable senses, which is what Anmi just described, and then she talked about a sixth sense. So 
I think the reason that senses are so important is because as you palpate them, like you palpate your muscles, they're either going to make you happy or they're going to make you sad. And so I think the more, like for you for you to, when you put on your makeup, you're palpating your senses, your, its touch, its feel, um, then when you see something that you like, that's a visual palpation. Um, and then you and I, were t- we're, we've been talking about uh, momentum brushes. And so, and, and we related it back to you, you girls putting your makeup on. And because I read ancient uh, manuscripts and texts, and so I read about a story about a, a young princess called Esther and Mordecai. And so when Ahasuerus, aka Xerxes from 300, is looking for a new wife, she she goes through a beautification process of, of oil and myrrh for six months, and then uh, and then cosmetic makeup and that sort of thing for six months. And so when I read things like that, I see the value and why why it's important to females. And then, as I said before, we call them momentum brushes because they're, they're peppering our, phys- our physical senses in this world. So with sight, um, with, with touch, with smell, with taste, the five senses, and then Anmi alluded to it before, our, our sixth sense, which is our, our spiritual sense. And, and I think when it comes to emotional wellness and mental well-being, I think the more of those, those, those brushes, every time you, 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 you palpate or pepper one of those senses, the more that you do, then the more happiness you get out of them. But the thing is, is that it's temporary. So you keep, you, you have to keep on doing it every single day. And I think, um, when you, when you're palpating your senses, you're actually doing something to your neurological system. And that's actually the, that's actually the uplink that connect, that acts like an interface into the spiritual world. And so what you're actually doing when you do, do those sorts of things is, it goes in, makes a loop, and the spiritual picks up some spiritual things that we can't see, comes back into the physical, and then it make and then it uh, benefits our emotional and mental wellness. Yeah, and it's it's ultimately the invisible side, and we're trans. We're obviously using those momentum brushes to then create the physical, just like you mentioned. Yeah. And it's amazing how. Um, you know, every single day we all do this. We all have a um, a process of um, you know um, momentum brushes that we implement. But it's about realizing and ensuring and understanding. And it's exactly what you said on me. It's that awareness that you actually need to be able to pick up to then um, recognize. And it's continually uh, recognizing those small things that you do on a day to day basis. Because of the small things, obviously, as we all know, and we um, discuss this with our clients like yourself and me, and I discuss this with my staff members, it's the small things that will make a big difference in the long term. But it's how you perceive it, it's how you understand it, and it's that awareness in order for it to move forward to actually help you, um, you know, gain momentum in terms of where you want to be and where you want to go. Yeah. 100%. And I, I do believe as well, like, People need to learn to see that senses are gifts because they are little, I mean, little, they are amazing gifts that we are born with for us to get more joy out of life. And I think people kind of spiral downwards because they get caught in the emotion. Technically, there's only two emotions. You feel bad or you feel good, but you just need to accept the fact that that's how you feel and it's a feeling. You're not gonna die from feeling a feeling. It goes, right? So, but people think that sometimes they dramatize and it's like the getting, getting stuff. But seriously, sometimes the things that I see here and I'm like, you're not dying, just relax, breathe, right? But it's people get so, I think, worked up in one emotion. They are sad about the fact that they're sad and angry about the fact that they're sad and that they feel bad. So, if you do that, then you get, you're going to feel even worse for a very long time. 
instead of thank simply, you coach yeah <laughs> instead of simply accepting the fact that this is how you feel right now Mm -hmm. And maybe in five minutes you're going to feel differently. So, and that's, that's exactly why I didn't say I had a, a, my sphere is emotions because it's not it's something that I'm still learning to mm -hmm. to tackle. Um, yeah, but I mean, because I'm new to it, even though you know I'm a bit older, but I'm new to the the emotional side of things, and so yeah, I'm I'm learning. I'm a, I'm a baby in terms of um, emotional stuff, but yeah, my 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 forte is information and psychology. So. Yeah, but that's great. Everyone brings different things to the table and all we can do is share and bring it together and grow together, right? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got a friend actually that um, that I know of and, and that's exactly what happens. She gets caught up in the moment of things and reacts. Um, and just like you were saying, and me, it's, it's a matter of just, um, yeah, accepting it and then eventually you've got to move on because otherwise if you become consumed by um the sadness it just overrules your uh, your senses and therefore you can't actually move forward and there becomes no momentum so you've got to be aware in order to make that change and actually understand exactly what's happening to then um, make that change um, and a lot of people nowadays are finding that they're just getting so caught up in the little things in their own life, whether it's something that one of the kids did, their partner did, something that happened at work. But um, again, like we alluded to, it's those momentum brushes, those little things that you do every single day, um, whether it is you go and um, put your makeup on or do you feel comfort in um, sitting in a room and listening to some music. Um, you know, it's, it's just finding those things that momentarily will actually put you in that place of yeah. well-being that will then obviously transform you forward so then you can keep going. And I think that's probably what the key is. Um, yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's doing, it's finding out what your momentum brushes are mm. and doing those in succession all day, every day. And I think one of the major problems, and this is why I'm building an Amazon shop, is one, it's, it's a time, for money thing and and so and the, I'll come back to the herd mentality, mentality again because most societies they've been indoctrinated that they have to work and the problem with trading your time for money is that you never get enough time to do the things that you love and so then you don't get the opportunity to spend a whole week of every day doing your momentum brushes because if you did You'd just be happy all the time and so these are the things because we know these things and we're aware of them and we're also aware of what the elite are doing in terms of controlling the masses and so this is why i want to introduce uh phrases like momentum brushes and so forth and, ho and hopefully people will get those pragmatic that pragmatic concept it's about doing the things that you love because you'll have multiple things that you love and so you, you should do those things daily and then they'll they'll bring a well a healing well mm. of of happiness to to your soul mm. no definitely very um, well said i love that and, and in terms of our sentence senses um on me um and i suppose for yourself you know dealing with um you know, your friends and your family and your patients. You know, how do you, um, and, and what do you do, um, you know, what do your senses tell you and how do you help, you know, your friends and family to understand? I know we spoke about awareness. What other things um, do you do with them to, to help them? Um, I, uh, I make them, uh, basically all I do is make them aware because there is different levels of awareness. And I also, uh, I ask them questions because if you ask questions, people think, I, you know, they come and see me sometimes and they're like, okay, she's going to give me all the answers. And then when they sit here or when we sit on Zoom, then I'm asking them all these questions and they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, um, I never thought about that. I said, well, okay, write it down because this is super important to dwell on and to kind of like, you know, put in your mind because... I think I've said it to you when we were talking off camera, 
what are you feeding your mind? Yep. And this is very important because your answers are going to come from, of course, inside of you because you have all the answers. But often these answers can't come out because there is so much conditioning and there is so many layers on top of that answer that need yeah. to be cleared away first before the answer can come out. So that is one thing. So asking questions to make people think about themselves and their behavioral patterns, going back to emotions and responses. And is that really an appropriate way? Uh, if you had total control over your emotions, how would you respond? And why are you not responding that way? What's standing in the way that you become a crazy animal when something happens or when you get super angry? So how could you uh, do it better? And uh, so we look at various things on, um, but it, it depends from person to person. It might be the reason why somebody uh, gets completely out of control when one word is being said is because they have hang-ups from the past. And, mm -hmm. and I, yes, sometimes, and it's sometimes from childhood and from very, very young, and they carry that with them through the, their whole life. And then they just need that one word or that one situation that something gets triggered and it's just spirals out of control. So what we work, because I studied NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and also Timeline Therapy, there are two techniques. They work very, very well for releasing those, those emotions. Like mm -hmm. when I work with a client for maybe half an hour, boom, it's gone forever, and they feel like a, a weight fell off their shoulders. And yeah, amazing. Yeah, it, it is absolutely crazy what you can do. It's so simple and, and, and so effective. And another um, technique, if, if you need to go deeper into the subconscious mind, um, hypnotherapy is also um, very, very, a very good technique. And what I wanted to clarify, many people are like, oh my God, hypnotherapy, I'm going to, you know, like be like a chicken or something. Um, <laughs> but... We are talking about clinical hypnotherapy here, which is basically deep, a deep state of relaxation that you can access your subconscious mind. And, and once you can access your subconscious mind, you can basically reprogram your brain and then you don't have these crazy outbursts of anger or sadness or whatever the problem is. Yeah. yeah. You got some perfect um, answers there, and I suppose too, it's also going to help some of the audience to really think a bit more around, um, you know, what they need to to help them in their situation. And with yourself, TZ, um, you know, what do your senses tell you? Because I know we've had lengthy conversations about various things that have happened in your life and in your past. Um, you know, how how have you used those senses to move yourself? forward yeah i think i think i think psychology and emotions are inextricable of each other because psychology can drive emotion and emotion can drive psychology and the perfect example for that is when you're facing something exactly like unmi said and then you draw you start drawing from your memories, which is your emotions, but then you're also drawing from your knowledge bank. And so emotions can condition how you perceive knowledge because if you're in a bad mood and you really need that knowledge, but it doesn't look good to you or doesn't seem good to you, you can actually filter it up when that's actually what you need. And so it's real tricky. It's real, it's really, really tricky. And so there's a real imperative need to understanding how those two they they interlace with each other and i think the battleground is the mind and so coming back to what we spoke about before on me where everything comes down to what you feed yourself what you see you are what you eat and when i say that i'm talking about what you read what you listen to people you listen to who you let feed you because you're being fed mentally 
<clears throat> but that's going to condition your emotional experiences. Mm. And so I, I suppose it's a, it, the way that I work with psychology and then I'm learning about emotions and, and how psychology can either detract from, your, from the emotional content in your life when it comes to your experiences or it can be efficacious or, or conducive to your emotional experiences because ultimately you base everything on knowledge. Definitely. And you know, senses is such a, a massive um, area to cover and we could be here literally all day, every day, 24 hours, but unfortunately we can't. <laughs> So, um, but it gives us um, a good opportunity to obviously transition into our next show because I'd love to have everyone come back. Um, and I know for our audience, um, we've kept you, you know, we've captivated you and we've engaged you because I know you're going to come back. Um, but I think it's really important and, and just like we were talking about um, the mind, um, a real quick story I suppose to here is that it's so important that you do use your senses when you're actually engaging with somebody else if you can see and you're in a position where and we'll look we'll say two partners if you're in a position where um you know you're having a disagreement and you know yourself you need to stop and because your senses are telling you your your mind's telling you you know your sight your hearing um, your sixth sense every single sense is telling you to stop you actually need to listen to what they're saying because it's there's, it's it's saying um, it's talking to you for a reason, um, and this is definitely something I want my uh, the audience to take away because we're going to engage with people every single day. We're going to come across people that we don't agree with, that we're not going to connect with, and you may have um, a situation where there's a disagreement. But you've really got to think: is it worth continuing, knowing that your senses are telling you to stop? because ultimately it's going to have a direct effect on you, um, whether it's emotionally, mentally, um, but also in turn it's actually going to have the same effect on the other individual. And I know it's hard, especially for partners, because you want to get that point across. You want to win. And you know that, although it's best to listen and obviously really understand what your senses are telling you and act on it. Um, Anmi, for yourself, if you were to give, you know, a tip for for the audience to take away that they can absolutely implement right now because that's what's great with our senses you can do anything and everything at the drop of a hat at any single moment what would you suggest um in regards to because you know now with the you know people working from home way more and in, there is way more pressure on the families and you know kids are always home some people are homeschooling the partners are together 24 7. so my my main takeaway what i would say is it's way more important to be happy than to be right so when you argue also have ask yourself the question are you arguing about everything because if you do then you're arguing about nothing Mm -hmm. So I hope that makes sense because yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like if you're arguing about arguing about everything, it means that there is no need for arguing. It's just uh, it's validation. It's like, do you see me? And the question that I often ask my clients when they come with this kind of problem is, it, why, where, in which area do you need validation? And you really need to ask yourself that question. Because the reason why people argue a lot usually is not to argue. Usually there is not really a problem. It's just to get validation. And then my final point is, you know, like, think about it. It's way more important to be happy than to be right. Because sometimes being right is just an illusion. And if you can see that, people would argue way less, right? Yeah. I'm writing that one down on me. <laughs> absolutely yeah i totally agree with that um sorry to interject the uh jamie i yeah i totally agree i mean like i'm still learning uh the emotions game and you're absolutely right people just want validation they just want to know they just want to know when you're when you're a partner of someone you just want to know that you're important to them mm. 
And so you seek validation and that validation can come in a myriad of ways um, because everybody is different. And so it's something that I've been learning in my journey the last four months in terms of, look, do I really need this validation? I mean, it's, you know, some days, some days you're, you know, and and I'm I'm gonna speak this to to male, to all my male counterparts out there because I'm not an alpha male and I'm definitely not macho. I'm probably more. I probably have more female qualities because I'm very affectionate and attentive and delicate and soft and, and, and gentle. Um, and I I don't really like to veer on the other side because that's not who I am, that's not how I'm wired, but because I'm wired this way, I'm also very emotional. And so, like you said, you you, you, you insinuated, we we look for valid, validation from our partners and sometimes the emotion and that when you don't think you're getting that validation, you can start to encroach on things that your partner's not comfortable with. And so that's where problems can start. And I think I think what we really need to focus on when it comes to partners is just being grateful, being grateful to be with them, being grateful for the things that they do for you. And then just working on things slowly but surely over a prolonged period of time and i just say that because you know i'm 45 years old and i've been all around the world and, and i have lots of things yet to master and i'm trying to master being an amazing partner um in terms of understanding my senses and what they're telling me what jamie was just alluding to and yourself um, and and getting the mastery of those because I think once I can master my emotions and my emotional content, I'll be able to combine that with my mental uh, skills in terms of psychology mm-hmm. and all of those senses, the the panoply of 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 senses that exist. Because there's more than just what we can touch, feel, taste here. There's there's more than that, you know, and. And those are the those are the, the spiritual senses that that take us into the the unseen realm, the invisible things, and those things are eternal. And so you got to be careful with your physical senses, what you put into action, what you put into play, because what you put into play can go into the invisible and be eternal. Mm. Absolutely. So maybe uh, once you've mastered uh, those skills and emotions, we can. Have another conversation (laughs) (laughs) and we'll just play it on our show (laughs) (laughs) so look um i just want to thank everybody and all the audience that um is here and look apologies for the last recording unfortunately we wouldn't have an amazing show if we didn't have any uh, technical errors so um look thank you so much um census is a big massive um discussion point and we're going to continue that on into our next show uh what we will be talking about is uh, what we call cd uh, cognitive dissonance and potentially bringing in that sixth sense as well so um thank you everyone thank you Anmi. thank you cheesy um stay tuned with us i hope you enjoyed the show and i hope you were able to get a lot out of it i know i did because i was eventually writing it all down myself um but thank you so much um on me i hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend thanks for having me it was really epic no thanks Thanks for having us for your advice yeah yeah amazing amazing um i love what we all contribute because we all have different sets of knowledge we all have different skills and different qualities different characteristics and that makes for really interesting dialogue because you you get pieces from different people that are valuable or even invaluable to all the different uh, audience out there. So yeah, awesome. Definitely. I, I definitely believe that we all bring amazing value to the table and look at my cat. So happy. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
But oh. yes, I look forward to the, the next episodes and to sharing way more. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we definitely want your feedback. So um, jump on my YouTube channel, Stay Me, and um, leave a comment and we definitely will respond.